Um, hey guys, my name is Whitney Hebel. Um, I am here today to talk to you about reimagine recruiting. Um, this is actually something that it's hard in our business. I feel like it's the hardest part. Um, sponsoring, I call it sponsoring, not recruiting. So you may hear me say that. That's what I mean when I say it. Um, but how many of y'all feel like you're just, you can't sponsor? It's not for you. You don't think you can do it. You're not sure who to ask. Um, I asked that because I was a certified consultant, essential consultant uh, back in the day. And I remember thinking the negative thoughts of, I'll never sponsor someone. Um, who would I even ask? Um, only people who look a certain way or have a certain lifestyle or, um, I don't know, lucky people were the people that sponsored. Um, and I attended a training and I realized that the one, the one thing that she said that has stuck with me for years now is sponsoring is a lifestyle. Recruiting is a lifestyle. So what does that mean? It means that it's just something you do. So we sell Scentsy, right? Some of us are really good at sales. Um, we share our products. We uh, share the LTOs. We share what's in our catalog. We share our new warmers, the new fragrances, right? We have to be sharing the opportunity just like we do with our products, okay? So sponsoring the is a lifestyle. It's just what we do. You sponsor. And that's what you need to say to yourself is, um, I'm going to sponsor someone. I'm going to sponsor someone this month. I'm going to sponsor someone this week, right? Um, if you don't currently sponsor, we're going to change our mindset with that. And you're going to say the things you're put it on your mirror. I'm going to sponsor someone. I sponsor people. I recruit. I'm a recruiter. I recruit people because once you change that mindset and those negative thoughts, things are going to change. So the first thing, and a lot of, a lot of our business is self-reflection. So my team is on here. They're going to hear it again. You have to have the self-reflection in your business. And the first thing that when someone on my team comes to me and says, Hey, I want to sponsor, but I, I, what, what am I doing wrong? Like, I, I feel like I've asked everybody, um, and I'm just getting no's or I'm getting ignore, ignored. First things first, we're going to expect that no. We are going to know that if we're getting the no's, we're, we're asking. But the question that I ask people when they want to make sponsoring a focus, which I'm assuming that's you since you're here, um, is how many conversations are you having? How many people have you asked? Whether it be this month, this week, any of that. And usually the answer is, I don't know. Okay. So if that's you, you can raise your hand. You can put it in the chat. I don't have it up right now because I will squirrel, but I will go back and read them. Um, how many conversations have you had? Think about it. Think about it right now. How many conversations have you had this week? How many conversations have you had this month? How many conversations have you had this year? Right. If you don't know the answer to those questions, I have a system that is very simple. That is part of my team name, Simply Grace and Grip. We keep things simple, but it's a, called an ATF system. It's called Ask, Track, Follow Up, okay? And that is the intentional system that I started to use with my sponsoring. And that's when everything's changed because not only was I intentional about it, but I could look at a piece of paper and say, I've only asked three people to join this week. That's not good. I've only asked one person to join this month, right? Because here's the other thing with sponsoring is it's a numbers game. If you're asking one person a month to sponsor, most likely it's going to take you about 10 months to a year to sponsor someone, right? If you're asking 30 people a month, then it's going to be more likely that you're probably sponsoring one to two people a month, okay? It's just Numbers. Numbers are facts for me. So ask, track, follow up. So we're going to talk about the ask part. Just ask them. And a lot of people get hung up on the verbiage or how to ask. And it is important to have that self-reflection on, am I spammy? Do I feel gross? Is it not genuine? Is it not authentic to who I am or how I'd actually talk to someone? And again, that's where that self-reflection comes in. Go back to old messages. 
I cringe when I read my old messages. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm like, that's gross. I don't like that. And that's when I change things. Okay. So just ask for me personally, every single host that I have is being asked if they want to get paid off this party. Every single host is being asked, have you ever thought about being a consultant? Now, um, I used to always ask at the very beginning of the party, before I even add them to the party, I would say, hey, is getting paid off this party something you're interested in, right? That's a huge thing that they, they have to answer me before I add them to their party. And that kind of set us up was, okay, is this going to be a launch party or is this going to be a party where you're hosting? Either way, totally fine, right? But I'd love for you to get paid off this party. Sometimes that response is, what does that mean? What does that entail, right? You're putting your foot in the door. You're dropping that seed to put down and start to harvest, right? So every single host, regardless of what the host says, we're going to ask every single party. Now, what do I mean by that? You need, if you're not sharing the joint opportunity in your parties, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. I had someone join from a party last month. She's killing it. She's killing it. Okay, so every single party, my post looks more like my Scentsy lifestyle. Um, it talks about what I've done with Scentsy, always in, include the income disclosure, but, um, and then at the end, it just says, if you're interested in or have any questions about this, send me a PM, right? Just message me. Um, the other part of the asking is people who spend a lot with you. Um, if you haven't asked your best customer yet, you need to right? We need to bring up that conversation. Hey, have you ever thought about being a consultant? Hey, have you ever thought about being getting paid off your purchases? You spend so much. Um, we are also going to be asking people that this business could bless because here's the thing. I hear it a lot. Don't get me. I hear it a lot, but it says you only want to recruit like that perfect person that you think would be great in this business, right? So we prejudge. Oh, I'm not going to ask her. She would never want to do this. Oh, I'm not going to ask her. Nope, she's not. She's not the one. Now, do you get to choose your teammates? Kind of, yes. But you never know what this business could do for someone. Okay. Um, and I always talk about one of my uh, friends, Sarah. I she was my neighbor. I never would have asked her to join. Never. And one day we were kind of talking about the business a little bit, and I was like. Have, are you interested? And she was like, I was waiting for you to ask me. Boom. One of my frontline directors, right? So you just never know what people need and where Sensi can fit into their life, okay? So if you're prejudging people and you're not asking them for any kind of reason, do something uncomfortable and ask them. It could be a total game changer for you, for them, for both of you in this business and personally. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm also fighting a summer cold. So that's why I'm a little froggy today. Um, anyone who loves our products, really. I mean, that's the, that's the beauty of this that Sarah was just saying. Like, we have to share that, yes, I do this full-time. But since he's not, that's a majority of our consultants aren't full-time consultants. They, they have a side gig, right? So this business can be anything from getting paid off your purchases, being active every once a month, every 12 months, or it could change your whole future. However you want to say that, we have to keep sharing that. There's a wide range and there's a space and there's a, space and there's a spot for every single type of consultant in Sensi. okay? The hobbyist, the side gig, the people who want to change their future and everything in between, there's a spot for them, okay? Because it, it, it's up to us. We're independent business owners. Um, anytime you're in a conversation and it feels right, and I know not everyone has that ability to know like, okay, this is like where it's leading, right? When you're, when you're in a conversation. But whenever the thought comes to your mind, like she would be really good at this or she spends a lot with me or whatever it may be, whenever that thought comes to your mind, act on it. Don't be scared, okay? Like I said, we have to take that fear and throw it out the door because once you're, once you're not scared or once you're not letting that fear hold you back, your business is going to change. Because here's the thing, guys, all they can do is say no. Okay. And like I said at the beginning, we're going for the no. We're expecting the no's. The majority of the people I asked to join are no's. 
you're going to get a no. And they're not, <laughs> as humans, we don't like being told no. From kids to adults, no one likes hearing the word no, regardless of what it may be. But again, we got to change that mindset. They are not saying no to you. They are not saying no to us. They're not saying no to you as a person or a friend or a family member. They're just saying no to the business, okay? Or the opportunity of the business. Do not take this personal, okay? I used to take it personal. It used to let me, it used to make me not want to do it, right? Because when you continue to do things and you're not getting where you want to go, that makes you want to stop. But once you take that extra step to keep going, that's where the magic is going to happen, okay? It's not a you problem. It's not your problem that they won't, don't want this opportunity, okay? This business is not for everyone, but it can be for anyone, okay? I'm going to say that again. This business is not for everyone. Let's be completely honest here. We're going to keep it real, but it can be for anyone, and that's the mindset we have to go when we're sharing this opportunity. Don't prejudge. Share the opportunity just like you would our product, okay? So um, in the Ash Track follow-up um, system, it's actually on my YouTube if you want to look, look at it there, but you're going to ask, you're going to track by writing their names down, and then we're going to follow up later, and I'll talk about the follow-up in a little bit, but ways to ask. Have you ever thought about doing what I do? I've said a few of these already. Have you ever thought about doing what I do? Would you like to get paid off this party? Would you like to get paid off this order? You've ordered X amount of times. You should think about becoming a, becoming a consultant, right? Or things like um, if you have, and I'm going to talk about this in a minute too, but if you have a kit up for grabs, a host exclusive kit, hey, I have a kit up, a discounted kit up for grabs. I'd love for you to join, to join me or partner with me or come do this with me, whatever it may be. Um, but we're going to track it. We're going to write it down. We're going to write their name. We're going to write their date, the date you asked them, and then we're going to write notes on it. Now, again, simple Whitney over here, basic, you know what? This is what it looks like, guys. It's just their name, their date, which is this is this, is this month. <laughs> and then I have notes. This is a very simple one. I obviously didn't take a lot of notes from that one. I put reinstate there, right? But let's, this is my system and I am not a paper and pen girl, but this is what I have found to work for me. These are all papers of names of people that I can follow up with, that I've asked, that I've planted that seed with, okay? Um, with these, I'm going to know that I asked Susie Q on 210 or Annie Spaghetti on 25. She's thinking about it. Right. So I can go back and I know when is the last time I asked those people um, months and months of these names. If they're highlighted, they they joined. If not, they're still on my list. OK, because I need to know I've had this conversation with this person. Right. It's time for me to follow up with them. So we got the track and then the follow up part. It's going to happen in time. If you're building that relationship with your customer, you're going to be talking to them. You're going to be building that relationship, that connection, all of that. Um, so if you're going through your list and you're like, oh, Annie Spaghetti, I haven't talked to you since February. Let's let's see. I have a, I have an opportunity for her to get this join kit for uh, half off. I'm going to offer it to her. Right. So in time, second one is with join specials. Right. Anytime there's a join special, which we always have a join special. But when there is a join special, like a 25 or something that is extra, which we've had every single month, the last few months, that's a reason to follow up. Hey, KCCQ, we have this extended um, or this these exclusive items added to the kit this month. I know we've already talked about it, but I just wanted to touch base and update you with the kit contents. OK, talk to them like you would talk to your mom. Talk to them like you would talk to your best friend. You have to be you. If you're copying and pasting a join message, we got to cut that out. OK, because we have to be authentic in what we're doing and what we're offering them, because they're going to know. They're going to know if you're copying and pasting a message to 55 people, okay? Um, follow up when you see a change in tune is what I have. So when you see that maybe they're sharing about hardships or issues, or maybe you're seeing that they're um, ordering more, or maybe they're even interacting with you more on social media, that's a good time to follow up. And then obviously when you see a life-changing event with them, whether it be they lost their job or... Um, 
they just moved somewhere or I just saw today one of my friend's daughter she joined gymnastics again so she's at she's asking for fundraising for their uh, uniforms <clears throat> that's an opportunity for a join um and then if not I'd say every three to six months if you haven't talked to them um this is a system this ask track follow-up is a system and I personally, I know that I have to have a system to do it because if I don't, then it'll just, it'll go through to the wayside. But there should always be a CCR with any system and that's conversation, connection, and relationship. Like I mentioned, you should be talking to your customers. You should be um, connecting with them, whether it be one-on-one -on -one or on social media, commenting on their posts and being intentional about that. So the other thing I had was, talking about the host exclusive kit. We have to utilize this. This is our join special every month. So first things first, if you are, um, or if you're not, if you don't have a catch all party link every single month in your, in your business, that's the first thing I would suggest. Now you're going to get to a point in your business where you don't need any more free Sensi. Like we're good. We got, we are at max. And that's where I was at when I started to offer these because I'll do a, um, catch all party link. And I'll usually name it the, the month that it's in this month. I've had three catch all party links because of the flash sale or the clear warehouse clean out, whatever we're calling it. Um, but once they hit the 500, I make a new one and then I make a new one and then I make a new one. Okay. Now with that, it's up to you what you offer them, but you could offer a kit for no out of pocket cost, which is what you would have to offer it, um, publicly because we cannot say the F word, which is free. Get your money out of gutter. Or you can post that you have a discounted kit. A $59 kit is a discounted kit. You can even use some rewards towards. So say you have a catch-all party link that's um, at the $500. So you obviously have tons of rewards, but you only want to put $20 towards it. That's up to you. Use what you want on the rewards and then the leftover can be theirs towards the kit. That is your join special every single month. And if you have those to offer up, that's going to be a huge conversation starter. Me personally, how I earned annual mentor a couple of years ago and how I sponsor now, 99% of them are the host exclusive kit. Okay. Um, people can also earn their business for free with their launch. Um, and by doing that, just like with any host, if they're hosting a party <clears throat> and their party qualifies enough to cover the cost of the kit, it's essentially a free join for them. And then as their consultant and their leader, you're going to flip that PRV to them. So boom, they're going to earn some of their rewards right off the bat. First things first. And that's the best way to set people up for success is helping them do it because you're going to help them anyways after they join, right? So help them beforehand and really kick their business off strong. <laughs> okay. It doesn't have to be just the $99 kit that you're offering people, like I said. Um, $59 or less are no out-of-pocket costs. So in the reimagining part of sponsoring, we really have to find what that means to us and how we're going to change things. So again, that self-reflection of where am I? Do I need help with sponsoring? Majority of people are going to say yes. What can I change to do that? For me, the first thing I would suggest is upping the number of people you're you're ask, actually asking one-on-one -on -one conversations. And I think that's it. I know Sarah has questions, but those are all the notes I had for today. Okay. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I was taking notes. There's some good nuggets in there, my friend. Holy smokes. Uh, I was keeping an eye on the Q&A. Um, I really, before I get to the questions, I really wanted to talk through that fear and the prejudgment, because I think that's where a lot of people struggle. Um, I saw some comments that like, that's a fact. Prejudgment is a thing. I just assume that they won't want to do this. And we have to stop making assumptions. Bottom line. Um, and that fear, and I talked about this a little bit on our leader call yesterday. We had a sponsoring topic too. And imagine like as fearful as you are to ask, they're probably just as afraid to join. 
So when you think back to how you felt when you first joined, were you nervous? Were you scared? Were you worried that you weren't going to do a good job or what your friends and family would think? And, oh my gosh, I just joined an MLM, you know, all of these things. And so as fearful as you are to just simply ask, hey, have you ever thought about doing this? You're so good. At this. You would be so great. We don't ask them, number one. And number two, they're probably like, oh, I'm so glad she didn't ask because I would be terrible. So that fear goes both ways. Um, so I wanted to just kind of dabble into that a little bit. How do we get past that fear other than just asking? What has been the most helpful for you to just push past? Um, other than just asking, that would be my answer is just asking. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing with that. The confidence that you're going to have in yourself and in your business is from action right? So is from doing those hard things. Um, so things that can help with just asking is having an accountability partner or doing it with your team or contacting your upline or your downline or your sideline, whoever in this business to say, Hey, I really want to do some scary things in your business. I'd love to just like bounce things off of you because other than just asking to do it, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know because he, like I said, the confidence that I used to have in this business compared to what I have now is totally different. Mm -hmm. I, I've shared this before. The first world tour I went to, um, I was like, something's wrong with these people. Like so something's wrong because they are, they're crazy. And they like believe this, that they believe, they believe in themselves. And that was the actual um, topic for the world tour was belief. And I think it's so, so important that we get that belief and you're going to get that belief in yourself, in your business, in just life by doing those things and proving to yourself that you can do the hard things and that they seem hard now. Like I, even now they're still hard to me. There's still times where, um, just a few months ago, I, I asked someone in my neighborhood and I was like, she's, she's not, she's not going to do it. But I still asked her, she said, no. And we're still both alive and breathing and we're both <laughs> fine. We're both friend. Like we're, everything's fine. Right. Um, and I think that's the other part of it is that a lot of people like to share their wins, but there's going to be a lot of losses and that's where we can't take it personal. And we have to just know that that's, it's just part of our business. Yeah. And, and you think about, you know, we, we mentioned this, I want to say last week or the week before about like trick or treaters where they're just going, they're asked, they're going up to the door. These fearless children are going, you know, and, and I know it's now trunk or treat and all the things people aren't really going door to door as much as they were before, but before you knew that, Hey, if that light was off, they weren't interested. And you just kept going to the next house who might be, and we're they might about. have, they might have chocolate. They might have Skittles. We don't know, but we're still curious and we're still going to go and, and check it out. And so that, I think that hang up is a big thing where if you ask someone, that's a big ask. If they say no, how do you recover? So when you talk to your neighbor and she's like, oh no, I'm not interested. Where do you go from there? How do you transition back to this place of, ah, I'm awkward. Ah, I just asked you, oh God, how do you recover from a no <laughs> with that person? Usually I say something along the lines of no worries. Um, I love having you as a customer and that's it. Or I'll say um, today I asked one of my hosts, I didn't feel like it was right to ask her right off the bat because I don't know her very well. Um, but I asked, I, with my hostess coaching, I asked her to share something and she did amazing. Like she posted pictures of her warmers in her house and she did what we do. And I was like, have you ever? thought about being a consultant because that's what I do and she was like no it's just too busy and I was like I totally get it that this isn't for you and but I do ask all my hosts so that's my reasoning for asking her is that I, I offer it to all my hosts because if they're going to host a party why not get paid off of it so perfect, perfect. so guys for those that I've seen, like, I'm, I'm so afraid to ask because if they say no, I don't know how to recover from that. I don't know what to say next. Oh, great. No, no problem. I ask everybody. I I'm just so excited to share it. And I, I think you'd be really great at it. I ask everybody. I offer this to all of my hosts. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see here. 
Oh, this is a this is one too. So, you know, we mentioned MLMs earlier and how people may or may not have, you know, an opinion. A lot of people do. Um, Joanne said, I spoke with someone yesterday about just about being a customer by sharing Sensi. Um, he said a few years back, it was a thing in this area and they were bugged constantly to join. It left a bad taste in their mouth. I apologize for a bad experience they may have had. And if they ever change their mind, let me know. So if you experience something similar or whether it's social media, in person, at a party, at a fair show, what's your comeback to something like that? Um, I usually have the conversation that that type of behavior is inside and outside of MLMs. Um, I mean, I've had people come to my door and they don't leave my door and I'm like, I'm not interested. I don't know what else I can say to you, but this is not the time or place. I have some, like, it's not right. Right. So I've had that experience outside of MLMs and I would just tell that person, um, because we are in an industry that is rapidly growing, um, but it's still unknown to a lot and people fear the unknown. So we have to be confident in our business. We have to understand our compensation plan. We have to know why this is not a scam or whatever they're throwing at you. We have to know the facts of this business to then say, this is why it's not this, or this is why, or this is how it isn't. As far as people like giving that type of feedback, I would just say, I hate that you had that experience. Um, I've been on the receiving end of that as well. And I know it doesn't feel good, but, you know, I'd still love to have you as a customer or whatever it is that you're talking to them about. about. So um, I think people like to pin, like they like the easy way out kind of. So they like to say, oh, I've, you know, this is, you're bringing back some memories I don't like, right? So it's a, it's a gross feeling. And I think everyone knows how that feels. Um, and the key is to not be that person. Mm-hmm. I'll be that person. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned some conversations, um, little messages that you may have sent from when you first started that made you quote unquote cringe <laughs> when you look back on those. So, and I just in talking with consultants um, over the last few years, that's something that always comes up. Like, I don't know what to say. Mm-hmm. And I love your recommendations of just talk to somebody like their friend, like your mom. You're not going to just spew out this big, long paragraph about all the things you're just going to talk to them and just be real. Um, so Heather had a question about how do you do this at like a fair or a show where it's it's easier if you're behind a phone or a computer to maybe have some time to type things out. But when you're face to face with someone at a party or at a, a vendor event or a show or out and about at the pool or with your neighbor or something, when you're face to face, what's the best thing that you are able to say? as far as joining? Yeah. Um, usually, so one thing that I do like to say about shows and vendor events and all that is when I first started those, I was all so focused on sales, but this is a huge opportunity for joining. Um, so if you change your mindset again, that I'm going to go and I'm going to meet some new people, right? I'm going to make, I'm going to make some new friends. I'm going to get to know people because we just moved here a year ago. And that's one of the first things I did was shows and events to get my name out there and meet people. Um, and half of my recruits this year have been from people in my areas and it's from meeting them and talking to them face and face to face. So if you're able to do the shows and vendor events, you have a leg up on that. First of all, um, as far as joining, when someone comes up to you and they're like, oh my gosh, I love Cincy. I haven't found someone in so long. Do you have blueberry cheesecake or whatever it may be? Right. You're going to go off the energy. Oh my gosh, girl. Yes. I have blueberry cheesecake or no, I don't like you're going to, we match energies around here. So if you're excited, I'm excited. Um, and you're going to talk to them again, authentically about who, uh, with who you are. But when you're talking about joining in, they're like, oh my gosh, I just love this. Same thing from behind a screen for me, just because that's who I am. Have you ever thought about selling it yourself? You already love it. You probably already bought tons of it, right? Have you ever thought about it? And it's just that simple because especially with words, less is more. Typing for sure with the join opportunity, but even in person, just leave it up to them. Have you ever thought about joining? Have you ever thought about being a consultant? Um, And then that's going to lead the conversation. They're going to say, yes, I have thought about it, but here. And then that's when you can lead down the conversation of answering their questions or maybe, um, doing some fact checking for them or, you know, 
getting some truth bombs out there with maybe what they think it is and what it really is. Or they can say, no, I just love the product. You say, well, I'd love to have you as, as a customer um, come over here and enter my giveaway because I'm giving away X, Y, Z. And so you're going to get their information that way. And you're going to start building that relationship because they're going to start getting your weekly emails. They're going to see you on social media. And that could eventually be mm-hmm. a joy. Mm-hmm. And again, since it's not for everybody. So that's the other part. Like, I know that a no can definitely mean no right now, but it can also mean no forever. And I don't, and I think that's where it gets icky. Maybe with that last conversation we just had where someone was like, no, they kept going and going and going. And it, it is, it, it's not for everyone, but it can be for anyone, right? Like you were mentioning, it may be something simple that they need to pay off a bill or a hospital bill, you know, something, one thing. And then once they're done, they're done. But it could also be where someone's joining for a discount, like a lot of us did, and it has turned into life-changing money. So, yeah, and I, you mentioned kind of overcoming those objections too. When you hear a no because or no, this is what the right. So you have all these different routes you can take and and start having answers for their no's or I just don't have time. Oh, a lot of my <laughs> busy people get stuff done right? Or I just don't want to have people over to my house. You don't have to, or I I don't want to carry a lot of inventory. We actually discourage that, right? So you can start having those replies to some of those concerns that they're, they're telling you, this is the reason why I I have thought about it, but, or I, I don't know. I just, I don't know if I'd be good at it. And that's where that fear comes in, right? Where they're just as worried, especially if they're your friends or your family, they might be worried about letting you down. They might be worried about a relationship changing. Um, if they're not good enough, is that going to make you judge them as a friend down the road? Who knows? Um, if they're not able to get that support. And I know um, there was a comment, Nikki, a lot of people watch the Lula Road documentary. So now everyone feels like there's this huge eye of Sauron spotlight Um, just shining this darkness on what we do. And we have to show them how we're different. You're never going to convince someone online to believe the same way that you do just by your words. You have to show them how it's different. Um, Getting into a fighting match on social media is just not going to be the the place to do it. It's just not going to happen. So um, Lindsay said, can we talk about how we're not a pyramid scheme? And that Whitney mentioned that earlier where familiarizing yourself with the comp plan, understanding what our benefits are, understanding how our business model is designed, that we're not that way. And the the term pyramid scheme, really, every job out there, you've got someone at the top and someone at the bottom doing all the things. Like it's, that's just, it's silly to me. But anywho, the way to combat that is to have information and how you are showing how we're different. Because like Whitney said earlier, you're going to have this in and out of direct selling. You're going to have smarmy salespeople in and out of direct selling. It's everywhere. It's who you want to do business with, who you want on your team, who you want to be associated with, with a brand or a company or a person. Why? People, we've heard this before. They're doing business. They're building relationships with people they know, like, and trust. So what are you doing when you are talking with people, going back to the conversations, the connections and the relationships, that CCR that she talked about? What are you doing so people know you, so people like you, so people trust you? That's what it boils down, especially with the leadership role. Can you lead them? Will you be there to support them? You're not just bringing them in. Um, And that's a big one too. That's probably another training in and of itself, but just that trust that they're putting in you to kind of hold their hand a little bit as they take this leap. So. Can I answer one question I did? Yes. It kind of does go with that. She said that she had lost the comment, but said that she had sponsored two people and they didn't do anything with the business. You You need to sponsor more people. Okay. Because here's the thing. We have to focus on what we can control our circle of control and what someone else is doing in their business is not in your circle of control. If you're bringing them on and you've, and you've trained them up and you've, and you've onboarded them and you've given them everything, which honestly, even if you didn't have a sponsor, the workstation covers that for us Mm -hmm. as a leader. Yes. You should be helping them with personally, I think with their launch party and answering questions and stuff like that. But we have to know that there's power in the numbers because here's the thing. 
that I didn't realize until I got into a higher leadership role was, um, well, with Cincy, they like the, the goal is to have half of your front line active, right. In, as a leadership in a leadership role. And so, yeah, I have 70 frontline, but on average 35 are, are active. And so that should show you that, yeah, you have two active frontline and there are there, you have two frontline and they're not active. All right. So let's shoot for four and let's see if those next two are going to get you that 50% right. Because people are, we, we can't, we can only control our actions and who we're asking and who we're onboarding and who we're helping. If they don't want that, that's fine. That tune can always change later for sure. Cause I've seen that happen. But if you don't, um, if you have a team that's not working, you need to build a new team. You need to get out there and you need to sponsor more people. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really what it is. And I see, I see it and I hear it so often. My team's not doing this, or I can't get someone to do this. I can't make them do this. You're absolutely right. You cannot. It is up to them if they do it or not. Your job is simply to ask. It's, it's up to a customer if they want to buy. It's up to a subscriber if they want to add more stuff to their club. It's up to someone else if they decide, hey, giving the Sensi thing a try is something they want to do. Your job is simply to ask and to share and to show how we're different, show the products we have, the opportunities we have, and how Sensi in all of its ways, shapes, and forms can benefit them somehow. There's something for everyone that they can enjoy. You just have to show it to them and then they'll make that decision. You can't pull somebody along. You can't make somebody do something um, that they're just not ready for or that they're not interested in. And you'll drive yourself crazy trying to do it. So yeah. if you have a team that's not active, find some more team. If your team isn't getting PRV, show them how to do it and keep going. It is up to others. You, Like she said, you can only control your own actions. That's it. I'm trying to catch back up. I know we're running real close to the top here. <laughs> Lisa, Walmart and Target are pyramid schemes. <laughs> there's a CEO, there's an owner of a company, there's a board of directors, it's, and then you have cashiers. You know what I mean? It's just different. So uh, that's funny. You're absolutely right, Kristen. She said, um, it's not a scheme, it's sales. Some people are sleazy. Some people aren't. Some people are doing it the right way. Like what's, if I say a car dealership or a car salesman, what comes to mind? You're instantly going to go to some image that you have in your head of what a car salesman is, but you know that there are good ones out there. The one you buy your car from, you like them, you know them, you trust them, and you'll go back for your second car. So it just kind of depends on the mindset there. There's good and bad everywhere and we just need to show the good yes uh let's see here yeah that, that's the same thing Renee you can't you can bring them right up to the water but it's up to them if they're gonna drink it or not you are right um here's a question for you Ryan mentioned um kind of going back to the fear but this is a little bit different and I know the answer to this but I want to hear you say it um how do we get over losing the fear of PRV if you're recruiting your best customers <laughs> um you're gonna you're gonna lose your your prv to your best customers that's gonna happen um but prv is something that is 100 controllable i think in this business and getting sponsors or recruiting is not again we're focusing on our circle circle of control so if these people want to join and you're going to get less sales but there's always 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 time and room for new customers um, you're always going to want to take that um, sponsor, that recruit over your sales. Um, and that's going to push you because you're probably very comfortable with those um, customers because you're getting that constant PRV. But what can this business do for them for just getting paid off their, their purchases, right? Um, so to get over the fear of doing it, one, I, I think you have to realize that you are, you're going to lose their PRV because it's going to go to them. Um, and know that that's going to happen, but also you can't, that's going to push you to go get more customers and then continue with your recruiting and your business is going to grow. And I promise if you keep doing that, I promise, promise, promise you, you'll realize that I'm right. And that it is going to build a business instead of just having your comfortable customers that 
come to you every month because it's long game. It's like short term. You're like, oh, I just lost my best customer. Oh, and it's hard. And it's hard. That hurts. That stings. But you're like, okay, well, if I keep doing all the things that I know I need to do, I'll find more customers. Yep. If you want to build a business, you're going to have to take some sacrifices like that. If you're, if you're just a hobbyist and you, and you are, don't want to grow, then do the, don't do it. But if you want to build a business and you want to be able to build an empire and change, yeah, change things in your current life, then you're going to need to sponsor for sure. Ah, Sylvia, I love your comment. She chimed in. There's the girl. My rock star teaming was my best customer. She had a $1,600 party and we flipped it but she's been a high PRV teamy ever since. And that helps me and helps her. Yep. Perfect. Love that mindset. Thank you, Sylvia. Um, so yeah, it's Alicia said, don't worry about your PRV. You're, you're building PRV for the future. Um, that's absolutely it. I, have, I love that. Um, oh, Becky. Yeah. She said it would hurt you more if their cousin joined Sensi and asked them before you did. <laughs> and the PRV would be gone regardless. Because that's the thing. It, that's the other part of sponsoring. If you're not asking asking people, someone else will. I will. Becky will. Lindsay will. Right. So that's the other part of sponsoring. And I tell my team all the time, like if we have mutual friends and you're not asking your customers to join, but they're watching me, that's you true. need to go ask them. You need to go ask them before they come to someone else and they say, hey, so-and-so hasn't asked me. I've had that happen before. So-and-so hasn't asked me, but I'm interested in doing this. So I love that, Becky. I'll ask you. Come on in. Come on over. Yeah, guys, this has been huge. I just saw someone, uh, Lindsay has three pages of notes. This is some truth talk today. And I hope that it is so helpful for you as we finish out the rest of this month, as we head into transition in a new catalog season, we have to shift our mindsets. We cannot say, oh, I'm not good at recruiting. Oh, I'm not a good sponsor. Oh, Yes, you are. Add the word yet at the end of it if you need to, but you can do this. This just becomes a skill set that as with anything else, the more you practice, the more comfortable you're going to get with it, the better it's going to be. And then it's just going to become second nature. It's just going to become something that you do as easy as it is for you to sell a six pack or a whiff box or a buddy or a fragrance flower, it's going to be just as easy for you to talk to people about, you know what, you should just do what I do. You buy from me all the time. Why, why am I the middleman here? Right. Amber Turner said that yesterday. So it's just going to become something that you practice. You get more comfortable at it becomes your skill set, and it's just hardwired. This is what we do. We sell and we sponsor. That's what we do. Okay. Sorry. That was a little truth bomb there. <laughs> okay. I have a couple minutes left. I just want to catch up really quickly. Um, just as a reminder, we have been recording. So if you need the replay, if you need to go back and listen in, or if you have a team member <laughs> who needs to hear some of these truth bombs that Whitney dropped today, uh, we, we can absolutely get that for you. So you'll get a reminder from Zoom tomorrow, um, but you can always just email me for it. I'm, I'm happy to send it out. It's walker at cincy.com for the email address. I'll get that replay, but we'll also have the produced version just with Whitney's segment on the training section with the slide deck that does not have the errors that I had earlier. I will correct them before we post them to the workstation. <laughs> All right, my friends, uh, real quick before we head out, I do have a, a prize, a couple actually, to, to give away just for being here. So prize pack for your customers, for your team building, all the fun things from the store. We have Beth Sleeman today. We have Joanne Harden, Harden, Den. Oh man, that was tough for me. Okay, and Melissa Landing. So if you heard your name, please use the Q&A, type in your um, consult ID number. We'll get these items ordered for you. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll send them out your way. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Whitney, my goodness, you will also get a prize back as a presenter. You know this, you will get one your way, but thank you so very much. This has been fantastic as we are reimagine recruiting, get out of our heads, get over that fear factor and just start doing the things that we know we can do. We know we can. So thank you for being here. This was really fun today. All right, scrolling, scrolling. And my friends, 
We will not be here next Tuesday because we'll be in Charlotte. So if you are there, come give hugs, come give fist bumps, whatever you're comfortable with, come say hi. Uh, we'll, we'll just, we'll be there. We're so excited to welcome everyone to Charlotte. So we're going to have a lot of fun. And then for everyone who's not either watching from virtual or watching from home on the virtual or um, just catching up on some trainings or, or making your recruiting plan for the new season, uh, We'll see you back here on August 1st at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. Take care, and we'll see you next time.